right. Okay. Hi, Jacoby. Hi, Ms. Faulkner. I'm running. Oh, here we go. It's like everybody's waiting for me to let them in. Yay, Derek's coming. Yay. Yay. Oh, I'm on Here she comes. Hi, Derek. All right, everybody's getting connected. I'm running late today. I'm usually ready five minutes before and I was too busy talking. All right. Hi, Derek. Hi. How are you? Good to see Good. you. Hi, Everybody say hi to Derek. Hi, Derek. Hi. Okay. All righty. Let's get going. All right. Going to share the screen. can't see it there. There it is. Okay. Here we go. Everybody see this screen? Yes. 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 <clears throat> All right. So we're going to look at reading and social studies, but first we're going to talk about just a real quick reminder for people who are watching this on YouTube and not here live that every day you should be reading independently. You should be looking at Ms. Hernandez's uh, phoneme and graphing lessons and listening to me read the one and only Ivan. Alrighty, and um, since most of you are here today, you don't have to worry about sending me pictures, but if you are watching from YouTube, then I need you to send me pictures of your work by Friday. All right, joke of the day. I haven't done joke of the day in a long time. So here's the lion. The lion says, hey, elephant, why isn't there any gambling in Africa? And the elephant says, because there are too many cheetahs. Get it? Cheetahs. There's too many cheetahs. Yeah. They're cheating. Yes. <laughs> you can laugh. All right. <laughs> this, I wanted to show you guys this. Guess who painted these pictures? The person who wrote the book. Yeah. Who do you think painted these pictures? And it wasn't me. Ivan? Yes! These are, so I remember I told you guys that Ivan, the story, the one and only Ivan, is based on the real, a real gorilla named Ivan who lived in a mall um, in Washington State. There was a mall that was like a circus, like in the story, and Ivan was eventually taken from that mall and sent to a zoo in, oh my gosh, where was it? I don't remember. I think it's Atlanta. Anyway, and so he lived there at the zoo. And um, I ordered a book that tells about that Ivan's life. So whenever that book comes in, we will read it to get uh, read it to you guys. But these are the actual paintings that the real Ivan painted when he was at the zoo. So I wanted to show them to you. So that's what his paintings look like. Because in the story, he draws. Here he's painting. All right, so this morning I talked about vocabulary, and this is some of the vocabulary. The vocabulary I talked about this morning was over here, coax, entwined, and indifferent. We talked about those three words. Coax means to persuade. Um, entwined means weaved, interwoven, and indifferent means uninterested. So I just wanted to talk about those three words again. Remember coax, they were trying to coax poor little Ruby out of the truck. Did you guys listen to Ivan today? Not yet, Raylan? Yes. It didn't come out for me. Jacoby has. Did you, Imani? It didn't come out for me today. 
Um, I, I linked it on Dojo, so you can find it on, on Dojo, and it's there for the reading today. <clears throat> All right, so I won't talk too much about it, so I don't want to ruin it for you guys of what's happened so far, but um, those were the vocabulary words that I talked about. And this we're the vocabulary free book and pamphlet. No, the vocabulary is not in the pamphlet. I just talked about it on the video. I just, it's a, it was just in the video, at the end of the video, I chose, I picked these three words to go with it. All right. So here's the, um, the new, remember the new neighbor that was moving in is a baby elephant and her name is Ruby. And that's all I'll talk about <laughs> because I and Ray Lynn haven't listened to the story yet. So here, the, in the story, she's a baby elephant. She's little. So look at how small this elephant is compared to the bigger elephant. And I'm just going to show you guys a video real quick of a little of the baby elephant. Just so you can see how much smaller the baby elephant is than all the adult ones. Alrighty. So these elephants are going to go take a bath. So you see how much smaller the baby is all the way down here? Yes, I can see it. It's right. They're big, they're small. <laughs> All right, so that's about how big Ruby is in the story. She's still very young, and now she's going to be living there at the Big Top Mall. And so just some quick information about, whoopsies, about elephants is they're mammals, they're herbivores, which means that they only eat plants and they can live up to be 70 years old. So that's a really long time. And their height at their shoulder, so from their feet to up to their shoulder is 13 feet tall. And they can weigh two and a half to seven tons, which is very heavy. I think in the book it says Ruby weighs 600 pounds, the little baby baby. So baby elephants are still very big and heavy, even though they're much smaller. All right. Some true or false questions. Now, this is from all the way back from the beginning of Ivan, okay? <clears throat> so we're just going to do true or false. This is not for a grade. This is just for us to talk about what we've been reading, just to make that a little more meaningful for us, okay? So Ivan feels angry all the time. Is that true or false? False. False, right? He says he never feels angry, that his, he never looks like that gorilla that's on the sign, remember? The sign that advertises the big top of the mall. He looks really mean, but he's not really mean. All right, number two, an elephant and a dog are Ivan's dearest friends. True or false? True. 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 He's friends with Stella and he's friends with Bob. Stella and Bob. And number three, Ivan weighs about 1,000 pounds. False. 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 I think it's false. I don't really, I don't think he weighs 1,000 pounds. I think he weighs about 
What did we say? Three to four hundred pounds is how much a gorilla weighs? Yeah, 300 to 400 pounds. Okay, so number four, Ivan keeps pretty busy in his domain. Is he busy or is he kind of bored? He's kind of bored, right? Bored and lonely. Sometimes he watches TV, sometimes he draws, sometimes he just stares at the humans. So I would say that one would be false. All right, number five, Ivan got a crayon from Julia, but never learned to draw with it. True or false? False. False, false right? Because he, do, he does draw, and then Max sells his drawings. Which, I'm going to be honest, I would totally buy one of Ivan's drawings. But not for more than $20. That's too expensive. Yeah, that's too expensive for <laughs> All right, some more. Ready? Bob sleeps on Ivan's belly. True or false? True. 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 Mm -hmm. he in Ivan's domain and he curls up on his belly. All right, All right number two. two. Stella says that the new neighbor, neighbor will be a lion. lion. True, True or false? false. That's false. 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 She, she thinks, thinks it's going to be. What does Stella, Stella say, say it is? The new neighbor. neighbor. A baby elephant. Mm -hmm. and, and she, she says she can hear the baby crying for her mother. It was so sad. I, I almost cried like two times reading today's, today's pages. Number, Number three. Stella's, Stella's injured leg is bothering. True or false? Stella's, Stella's leg is bothering her. True. Because it's hurt. True. 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 Yes. She, she has an injury, and then her foot is swelling up. And today she cut it. And the, she, she, uh, uh, so it's bothering her. All right. All right. Number, Number four. four. Ron was Ivan's, Ivan's favorite keeper. Do you guys remember this one? This, this one is not true. true. I don't remember the name of the guy. Who was Ivan's favorite keeper, but I know that his favorite keeper was the one who gave him strawberries. And then, then, what was that, Imani? I thought his name was Ivan. I don't why I don't bring my book with me when I come outside to do these meetings. We'll double check on that one, okay? All right, and number five, Stella thinks that zoos can be good. True. 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 Stella thinks that zoos are how humans um, are good to animals. All right. So, so we'll see what happens tomorrow. tomorrow. Oh, oh and, then, and then I forgot about this. Um, remember, remember the beetle? beetle. There was a beetle that went to visit Ivan, and Ivan saw it and drew it. And he said he used a simile to describe the beetle. He said the beetle. An attractive bug with a body like a block, like a glossy. Hold on, let me see if I can move. Like, like a glossy net. He's black as a starless night. What, what other similes can be made about the beetle? Remember similes? You wrote a whole simile poem about yourself a long, long time ago. Remember? Similes use like or as to describe things. And so he said that the beetle was as black as a starless night. So if you look up at the sky and it's a starless night, it's very, very black, right? So what other similes can be made about the beetle? The beetle is as what? As what? As blank as Ms. Feltner. Yes, ma'am. You're coming through real, real crackly. I don't know if it's the same for everyone else or just a dark art. Okay. 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 Hmm. Let me check. Yeah.
Does it sound any different now? Yeah, no. Yes. It sounds better? Yes. yes. Okay, good. Woo, I figured it out. Wow. Okay. I'm just over here talking to myself, having a good old time. <laughs> you guys are doing a good job pretending you can hear me. Okay. All right, ready? Yes. Thumbs up if you're ready. Thumbs up. All right, we're good. Here we go. So similes, we were talking about similes where we use um, like the words like or as to compare two things. And Ivan says that the beetle is as black as a starless night to describe um, his colorings. So how else can we uh, describe the beetle using a simile? The beetle is black, small. Small, so the beetle is as small as a nut. Nut. All nut. right. What about how would a beetle is a beetle fast or slow? Probably slow. Oh, could slow. be slow. Okay, the beetle is moving as slow as a snail. Snail, turtle. All those things work. I just wanted to, to remind you guys of similes because that is something that does come back over and over. It's figurative language um, throughout the years. All right. Looking at our packet now. Work and play. All right. Everybody get a chance to work on it? Yes. Yes, okay. I already made it. Okay. All right, well then we'll just look at the questions. Mm -hmm. Question number one says, which sentence shows an effect that playing outside has on the body? So when you play outside, what is an effect on your body? Is it A, different parts of your body are built to work together so that you can run, jump, and swing? B, your body needs oxygen to stay on the move? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. C, exercise can build your muscles to make you stronger and jump higher. Or D, your brain is always working too. I think it's, it's C. Okay, so by playing outside, it makes your muscles stronger if you play outside? Okay. Yes? No? Do you get stronger if you play outside or exercise? Do your muscles yeah. get bigger and stronger? Would that show cause and effect? When you look at cause and effect, something, you do something and then something happens because of it. So if you're working out and you're playing outside and you're lifting weights or doing different exercises, will you start to see muscles? Yes. Yes. So, yes. I agree with you. C would be the right answer. Mm. All right. Number two. Which detail helps you understand the problem solution structure of the section titled lungs? So the author tells you about a problem and then tells you the solution that gives you a solution for the problem. So when you breathe in, your lungs fill up with oxygen. D, your body needs oxygen to stay on food. H, you will feel out of breath if you run too fast. J, that is your body's way of telling you to slow down so that your lungs can bring more oxygen to your blood. What'd you guys pick? J. Okay. okay. What did you pick, Imani? I don't really know. I'm debating between J and G. J and G? Okay, so it says, when you breathe in, your lungs fill up with oxygen.
oxygen, your body needs oxygen to stay on the move. You will feel out of breath if you run too fast. So if you feel out of breath, that's kind of a problem, right? Because what happens if we run out of breath? It slow down. Yeah, you're not gonna feel good. If you, don't, if you can't breathe, you could what? It's sick. It's sick. Be close to dying, right? Because we need oxygen. So that's a problem. So how do how does it get fixed? The problem is you feel out of breath. Well, the solution. It says right that there's a problem solution. So your body solves that by telling you to slow down so you can get oxygen. Your body's like, hey, hey, calm down. We're running out of air here. You need to slow down. So that's why J, it would be J. All right, we got that one? Yes. Okay, number three. Which section explains why your heart beats faster when you exercise? Why does your heart beat faster? B. B. Jacoby B. says B. So if we look under lungs, says, why does your heart beat faster? I don't see anything about my heart beating faster in under lungs. In under blood, under the heading blood, I see heart pumping heart. Does your heart pumping hard? It's working hard to pump blood, so I see that there. Under muscles, I don't see anything about heart pumping. Under brain, nothing there. So we're gonna look under blood. So the answer is B. Your heart beats to send blood to your muscles and your brain. And when you're exercising, your um, heart has to work harder. Fly. All right, so number four is your own answer. What effect does playing outside have on the blood? What did you guys put? Energy to the blood. It gives energy to the blood, okay. What else? I got the blood. Oh, it gives you energy. Okay. Yeah. What else? Rayla and Imani, what did you put? Yeah, it gives the energy. Okay. Imani? Oh, wait, we're on four? Yes. What gives you energy? Okay, so that's what everybody's going with. Yes, it gives us energy to move. I had to watch a video about blood with Michaela from her PE teacher. And that's what it said, that in your blood you have nutrients that your body and your organs on the inside need. So, all righty, let's see what's next. All right, so you got this paper. And it was talking about a place called Kruger National Park. And so I wanted to show you a little bit about it because it's a real place. I didn't know it was a real place. So we're gonna travel there. We're gonna travel all the way to Kruger National Park through Google Earth. Are you ready? Yes. You don't have to pack a suitcase. <laughs> you can leave your toothbrush at home. So it's all the way over here in South Africa. So here it is. You see this big green spot here? Yeah. That is Kruger National Park. And you can actually, you can go there. They have um, a place for you. I'm going to go back to the, go away. Um, 
where you can go camping there. You can go camping there. You can stay there. So I just wanted to show you a little bit of the website, just so you could see that it was a good place. So there's a safari tour. Look at these people in a Jeep, and there's wow. a lot coming at them. Oh my <laughs> God. And so you, who wants to go sleep outside? <laughs> oh. Sleep outside, a romantic safari. Oh my God. Family safari. Awesome. So they have this place. Oh for you to go and visit. So it's a real place. And it says, steeped in legend and history, the iconic Kruger National Park in South Africa is waiting for you to explore its vast landscapes and spectacular African wildlife. Plan your Kruger Park safari trip from our recommended safari tour options which range from exclusive private safaris to affordable group safaris. Take a journey of exploration to find Africa's big five. So you'll see elephants, lions, rhinos, leopards, and buffaloes, and you will discover unique wildlife in a real safari in Africa. Let's take a look at the safari. We'll look at the most popular. Safari. So there's a picture of a lion. So huh? you can eat elephants. Cougar. Mm -hmm. wow. It looks very expensive. <laughs> but it looks like fun, right? All right. So let's go back to the presentation and take a look at our sheet. So it says a large park in the eastern part of South Africa is called Kruger National Park. Many animals live in there, but you can also find many interesting plants and grasses. Uh, many people visit the park each year, so they want you to match the animal to the description. This was very simple. All right, I have a long yellow neck with brown spots. I am a giraffe. Giraffe, very good. Uh, I am going to put. Number uh, letter B. I'm famous for my black and white stripes. I am a zebra. Zebra. C. I am large and gray and like to spray water out of my trunk. Elephant. Elephant. Yay. D. I have a large, beautiful orange mane. Lion. Lion. Very good. I have a lot. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I'm the fastest animal on earth. Cheetah. 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 I'm a beautiful yeah. antelope and wait. like to stay in a group. I don't know. Why wouldn't it just be antelope? <laughs> antelope. Maybe it's a gazelle? It looks Maybe like it's a gazelle. Gazelle. You want me to spell gazelle? Yes. I couldn't spell it correct. Oh, gazelle. I will go with gazelle. Yeah, gazelle is better. All right, gazelle. There it is. Got it? Yes. All righty. Well, that's pretty much it. If you didn't, I'll wait for you guys to finish writing before I start talking. I'm sorry. And since these were, since they're doing these, do they have to send the pictures to you too? No, ma'am. No, this works. He was. I hear heard him answering, and I see him working, and everything's good. Good job, Derek. Thank you. You're welcome. All righty. So if you did not get to listen to Ivan earlier, you can listen to it tonight before tomorrow. Um, so you can listen to the story. Um, pretty much the only thing I'm going to do, I'm going to put those true and false questions. We're going to do those true and false questions like we did today about Ivan and then just look at vocabulary. So after the story, I'll just talk about some vocabulary that was in the story and that's, that's going to be it. Okay. okay. And okay. it's not for a grade. Um, it's just, 
that we're doing our read aloud because that's what the state of Texas wants us to be doing right now. So um, that's part of the requirements for distance learning. So that's just a, a, a checkbox on a list that we got to cross out. So that's why we're reading Ivan. So we don't run, it's a chapter book. And so we don't run out of books to read because if we have to read a book every day, we'll run out of books. So that's why we're reading Ivan. And I hope you guys are liking it. You guys like Ivan so far? Yes. Yes, good. Good, and it's gonna be made into a movie. I don't know when, I keep looking all over the internet, but they're making a movie to it, and the author just made a part two, and it's called The One and Only Bob. So I'll oh. show you guys that on Thursday, because today she just released a book trailer about it. So we'll look at The One and Only Bob on Thursday, okay? All righty, so listen to Ivan if you haven't, and then you can listen tomorrow morning. All righty. Bye. All right. That's all for tonight. Have a good night, guys. Bye. 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 Bye.